Um, so again, thank you again so much for wanting to talk with me and chat about me. And obviously you got a few months ahead before the season starts with the sidekicks and uh, just kind of like going a little bit backwards. Um, how was it for you to receive the call that you were going to receive the head coach call, the head coach I mean, position? Actually, yeah, I was very excited, actually. Right. I played. um I played professional for 23 years and uh, MSL for 12 years. Actually, it wasn't MSL before, but indoor soccer, you know, uh, for 12 years, uh, they brought me, Danny Kelly from Baltimore Blast brought me here. Uh, I was playing futsal in Brazil professionally. And then since 2008, you know, I have been playing uh, indoor soccer. And then actually I finished my career as an indoor soccer player, as a player, last last season in april when i was with takomi stars but since 2008 uh i was you know being coaching like youth soccer and futsal and um in 2019 i got opportunity to opportunity to be the assistant coach of the west men's futsal national team and uh so you know uh it's a learning environment but i I think I have uh, a lot of experience as a player and as a coach as well, especially now uh, we just came back for the, for the Futsal World Cup, which is, is, is the highest stage that you can, you can get in Futsal. And, uh, and again, very excited, you know, to be the head coach of an indoor team, especially for sidekicks, have a big tradition. And uh, I can't wait to get it started. Actually, I already started like three months ago, but I'm talking about officially, like when you start the preseason and the season. Yeah, no, definitely. And obviously, you, you have a lot of work ahead of you um, as you're uh, integrating players into the system. Um, what are some of your impressions that, you know, there's a little over 50 days before the season starts officially. Um, what are some of your impressions with that? I mean, with the players, obviously, um, as you know, sidekicks, again, is a big tradition on the league, big name. A lot of respect, especially from the past when they won, you know, some championship. Uh, but uh, for the last, you know, few years, they didn't, they didn't do a good job on the field. So now um, my challenge was when I took over, uh, a couple of months ago is uh, same idea that um, I had along with the head coach for uh, for the national team uh, to build a new team, pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Uh, new face, so me, new coach. Um, I would like, I gave, I'm giving actually, I'm still giving opportunity to a lot of players out there to be seen. And then I bring a lot of players for, you know, to join us in the kick around and everything. And I'm building a new team, you know, players from the past. Obviously, we have some players under contract. Uh, but uh, honestly, I, I have been evaluating all of them. And I'm going to pick 25 players that I think they're going to be, um, you know, we are the sidekicks jersey. And we got to bring uh, the respect back uh, from the league. You know, that's the idea to build pretty much to build a new team. So I have been seeing like so many players and um, me personally, I have signed uh, five players only. And um, this week I'm going to sign a few more players. And then by next week, I'm going to have an, around 20 players on the roster. And you still have the final tryout, which was uh, selected by the coaching staff, myself and then the assistant coaches. And they're gonna have the final tryout in two weeks. And then by that time, after the final tryout, I'm gonna decide um, who is gonna be on the final roster of 25 players. Nice. So um, I know whenever you, you were assigned, uh, you were given the position of the head coach, you talked about how you're trying to build a family and um, you're wanting these players to bring on certain characteristics to be part of this sidekicks family. 
what exactly are some of those characteristics that you're looking for to these players? Um, the ones that are in already in the squad and the ones that are trying out to be a part of the squad? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I always talked about my uh, family in, in general, because that's a, a good team. You know, when you when you think about um, a good team, doesn't mean I always talked about package, right? Player must be a package. It's not just quality player. You know, obviously we're gonna see players with a lot of quality, but on the other hand, he's not a good uh, you know good teammate. He's not a good locker room guy. It does a you know uh, team must come first. Cannot be like personal stats first for example you know that's when i i talked about family you know to be not just a good player with quality but be a good person which is very important so i truly believe that a good team starts with good person we have to to trust each other you know to become a family and then if that happened we already have 50 percent of our job done and then the rest of the 50%, obviously, is going to be uh, tactical, technical, you know, psychological, uh, and then and, and physically, obviously. Uh, when you combine everything, I believe we can have a strong team. Nice. So you were mentioning that about the players that you've already signed um, from the past tryouts, and you're wanting to bring more players this week. I know you have uh, more or players trying out in Houston in the next couple of days. Um, how should those players prepare um, to be to be in that team and to, you know, what 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 exactly what else are you looking for besides being them as a family? Yeah, the quality, obviously, right? At the end, I, I cannot have like a really nice guy, but if he doesn't have quality, you know, as a package, everything must uh, be connected. So players, obviously, with all the experience that I have, uh, you know, combined with my, my assistant coaches, we're looking for players, the technical skill, you know, how he can understand. Obviously, some players, they have, a, 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 you know, very technical skill, but they don't understand the indoor game as, as we would like to, right? But uh, they can't just, you know, they can't just, I have seen players come from, from the futsal sport for outdoor sport, which is different sports. A lot of people, they think, okay, futsal players, outdoor players, they can go indoor and can play. No, it's not like that, right? It's a different game. I have my own experience. I came from Brazil in 2008. You know, I was playing high level in Brazil futsal. And then I came to Baltimore Blast. I didn't play. I have to learn the game to adjust you know, and then not just me, you know, I haven't seen a lot of guys from futsal and for outdoor, you know, good players, but indoor, they have some hard time at the beginning. So we have to adjust. And then obviously that's why I'm looking for. I'm looking for guys that has some technical ability. Obviously they must be in shape because indoor game is got to up and down on the field all the time. I know doesn't mean they have to be very fast or very strong. I believe that it's part of uh, some uh, soccer element, but it's not everything. I'm more concerned about the technical ability when they have that. So then we can, you know, we can adjust the indoor environment and teach those guys how to play, you know, the system that are going to be playing tactically and and everything else i think that's this come along uh you know through all the season because we're going to be training pretty much every day and then um and that that's that's all about it we have to to identify the players throughout the you know tryouts and um and to see who you think could be a good fit for us yeah um so Obviously, you're this is a construction process for you. These next couple of months, before you get your final roster in, you get um, you get your team. Season starts. What is your ultimate goal? Obviously, it's a really long shot before April. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of games to be played. What is your ultimate goal that you're looking to to achieve this season? Obviously, um, every coach that, that is starting a new job or in a new team, they're going to all, uh, 
as a player, as a coach, we always want to win, right? Okay, I can, it's easy to come right here and tell you, okay, my goal is to win the championship. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got to go through the process first, right? I build a new team. So it's not easy the first year, you know, build a new team. So all the teams and in, in the entire league, obviously, <laughs> they already have the core. They already have the core. You know, they're having together, at least they're going to have 50% or no, or even more, you know, players for, for last season or maybe two years ago, three years ago, players that have been playing together the same team for maybe three, four, five years. You know, I'm building a new team. So obviously the beginning is going to take a while, you know, to understand, um, to put all those guys together first. You know, they never play uh, together. Uh, that's going to be a new team and with new system. Everything's going to be new for the players. So offensively, defensively, how are you going to play? Um, how are we going to set up our restart defensively, offensively? So everything, we're going to start pretty much the beginning, right? Because I'm going to put, obviously, it's not the right on the wrong. There is no right or no wrong. That's the way that I believe. If it's right or wrong, I don't know. We're going to see, you know, I'm going to see throughout the season. If the players adjust right away and they can do it, great. If they cannot do it, then we're going to have it. We have to adjust. Then I want to, you know, to get to know all the players first and then to see um, what is the best for each of them I can get off for each of them. You know, and then, uh, but I mean, the idea is to, again, to make sure the players, they can understand uh, the system and um, to play as a team, to have successful, right? And then at the end, it's a sport. If you win, we lose, it's part of the game. How many games I have played in my life that I we play very, very well and then we lose? And the opposite as well. We play very bad and we win. So for me, if you players start understanding the system, what it will want from them, and they start uh, putting in place, uh, I'm going to be happy. At the end, I would like to win as many games as possible. And why not, you know, to fight for the playoffs, playoff spot in the first year? I think everything is possible. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, obviously, the past couple of seasons for the sidekicks haven't been the greatest. Um, they've won just minimal amount of games. Having these players that come from these two past seasons, what's what's your message to them? Obviously, you were talking about trust in the system, uh, and you have to gain their trust as well as you have to. They have to earn yours, your trust as well. Whenever it comes to field playing and all of that stuff. Um, how do you change that mentality for these players that have been having a couple of bad seasons to believe that, hey, let's do this. This is a brand new thing, new opportunity. I already sent the message since my, my day one. When I have uh, our first kick around back in August, obviously we only have two, three kick around in August. And then I left. Uh, I spent my, you know, the month of September in Lithuania with the national team. And I got back like three weeks ago and we back in truck, right? All the um, in track, like all the players, they they already know. You know, players, I send the message in the, in the, day, in the first day. You know, they're not, um, again, they're not on the team yet. They have to earn their spot, even though they still on the contract, but they have to earn their spot. I'm looking for 25 players. So obviously guys here under contract, they already play for sidekicks. And I told them they they one step ahead of everybody else because they already been here, you know, playing for sidekicks, but they still have to earn their spot. So as you said about mentality, it's not easy because again, as you said, for the last two years, sidekicks, they played 33 games and they won four, so they lost 29 games. It's not easy to come to a team that they have their mindset as a loser, 
right? Mm -hmm. But I had that experience when I was with St. Louis and Bush, like three years ago, I guess, was very similar. The situation was very similar, but I was a player. But I signed a contract with, okay, Pablo's gonna come here, you know, as a player, a lot of experience, as a captain, and we're gonna start to change some stuff. And we did actually, we had a lot of good games, but very close game. But you know what? At the end, we lost the game. At the end, we were very close. We lost the game. And players with that mentality is not easy to change. But it's going to be day by day, day by day. We have to work and they have to believe that system is going to help them individually to get better. And it's going to help the team to be successful. So when they believe on that, I think they start believing, oh, we can do it. And then the, that mentality starts to change a little bit. And then we have a game, first game. First game is very important too. Okay, it doesn't mean, okay, if you lose the first game, okay, that's it. No, first game, if you had a good first game against Bush at home, the home opener, and then we win that game, then it's going to make it easier for me as a coach to start change that, that mentality. But I think the players, they already start change that mentality. Little bit of details about professionalism, how we're going to be work. You know, we're going to be training in the morning instead of training like in the evening, which is already change a lot of stuff. So I think they have to, they must change their mentality. Otherwise, simple. If they don't change that mentality. If they're not professional, thank you very much. You out. I'm going to bring other player that can do it. Sweet. Thank you very much. Now, last thing, um, you know, you're talking about changing with the players and everything. Obviously, the fans have also been affected by this. And you're talking about trusting the system. What is your message to the fans who are eager to see things change and who are obviously wanting results? As a fan, as a sports fan, you obviously want results right away, which is really hard to accomplish. How, how can you convince these fans? And what's your message to them? I hope that can happen right away. I hope we can start the league one, two, three games and, straight, and win straight games right away. But... Right now, it's hard to say because first, as of today, I don't have my Ross set. I only have five players that I signed. So I'm still looking for 20 more players, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I can tell you this, trust the vision. That's the message. So trust the vision. Trust in our new system. Trust on the new head coach. Trust on the players they're going to be new in this organization. So, and we need everybody back to the stand. We need all the fans, like the, the uh, you know, the people that they believed in this organization on the past. We need those guys back because we cannot do that by ourselves. We need those guys to help us to build the new, I would say, reestablish the Dallas sidekicks, to build the new team, to build a successful team, to build a championship game uh, team, sorry, right? We need those guys. And what I can tell them is you're gonna see on the field guys that they're gonna fight in a good way. They're gonna play against every team in the league. You know, our respect is gonna be back but we need all of you, you know, to support us. Sweet. Well, Father, thank you so much. Um, that's all the questions I had for you. Thank you again for taking the time off your day um, to chat with me. And obviously I know you have a busy schedule up ahead. Uh, obviously you got, um, you got to travel down to Houston and watch some players down there. And you have to work with all of these people, bring them together, make sure the system works before preseason starts. And once season starts, obviously get the right results at the right moment. 
Um, I wish you the best of luck. I will obviously be paying attention to all of those things and updating fans as well, how the Psychics team is doing and how you're doing and how the players are doing. Um, good luck to you. And uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time off your day to do this with me. No, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, always a pleasure to talk about um, stuff that we love to do, which is, you know, coaching and indoor soccer. And I'm here if if you need anything from me, uh, I'm here anytime that you'd like to. And uh, awesome. yeah, thank you. Awesome. And thank again, you so much. I think the English is is it's kind of like hard. Fine. I don't know what you're gonna do with this. I don't know if that's gonna be on the um, I don't know, website or Instagram or I don't know what you're gonna do. What is the plan? Yeah. Yeah, so basically I'm going to be writing out a report with all the quotes that you've been talking about. And maybe I'm also going to uh, create like a, a graphic with, with just your voice um, and uh, just kind of put it out there that way with, along with the, with the article to kind of like put it all together. Yeah. Um, so to make it look. Yeah. You would be, the, yeah, please make sure that that looks good. Yeah, <laughs> that'll please. make it. There's a lot of mistakes in my English. There's a lot of. No. Do not worry you about know, it. Some not, stuff maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah. No, the message is pretty clear, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people will understand. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe next time I'll try to interview you in Portuguese. Then how about that? <laughs> okay, why not? There's a lot of there's a lot of Brazilian right there in our community. Yeah, there is. Um, so I don't know how. Obviously, you were here before, but they just opened a, another Brazilian store right off of Frankfurt and the Tollway. I don't know how familiar you are with the area there. I think I heard that is a yeah. it's kind of like a, a supermarket, right? Yeah, there's a they sell a lot of coxinhas, pastel. Um, oh my god! Yeah, um, okay. I just so I heard, I have heard, yeah. but I haven't been there. I have been on a one at um, on Plano, uh -huh. Brazil. The kiosk Brazil, yeah. So this one is called uh, Latino Brazil Latino Market. Okay, but yeah. it's basically all Brazilian food. A lot yeah, I heard food. that. I was supposed to go there today, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there you go. I just drove back from, I was in, in, in the area. I, I'm in Fort Worth, so. Oh, okay. Like a, yeah. A long drive. A little, but maybe yeah. tomorrow, because I got to go <laughs> off tomorrow. I have a, a, another interview tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow nice. I, can, I can stop by. Let's see. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I, I know yesterday, or not yesterday, Saturday, my wife and I, we, we went and got guaranas because we love guaranas. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Me too, good. man. I miss yeah. big time Brazilian food. But the good thing here in Dallas, we can we can get a lot of stuff from Brazil. I was oh, in yeah. Milwaukee. You know, I played for Milwaukee mm -hmm. for many, many years. And then I was there for 10 years. I just moved. Uh, moved in last year to Dallas, and uh, and there, no, we couldn't find <laughs> anything from Brazil. It was oh my god! But here, there's a big Brazilian community. That's 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 a lot of options here. Actually, there's a churrascaria. There's so many yeah. churrascaria. That's this kiosk Brazil, and now there's yeah. the new one right now. So I, yeah. Oh yes, I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, so did you so do you drink a lot of shimahong like in Florida and Opelis? No, shimahong no in Florida and Opelis, no, because we are tropical, we are on yeah, the big island. So big island, we don't but on the west of the mm -hmm. state is Santa Catarina, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. State of Santa Catarina in the south, yeah. and then we have Hugh Grand Sioux, and then we have yeah. so Hugh Grand yeah. Sioux, yes, huge. Yes, Shimahong. Mm -hmm. And then on the west side of Santa Catarina, mm -hmm. they they eat chimarron a lot, but on yeah. the on the coast, Florianopolis, no, not so much no for you guys. Yeah. No, 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 nobody yeah, drinks chimarron. Because I know for us in Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sul, we had a lot of uh, terere. Terere, which yeah. the cold yeah. version. Yes, so I love terere. Terere is yeah. the one. Parana, that... Parana. I played. Mm -hmm. I played in Parana, you mm -hmm. know, the other state, mm -hmm. and then um, and they they drink a lot of terere as well, Mato Grosso. Yeah. I have some friends yeah. they play Mato Grosso. I never been Mato Grosso to be honest with you, but I had some guys friend that they played in, in Mato, Mato Grosso, mm -hmm. and then they they said that they, they drink a lot of terere as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it helps a lot for sure. Now 
just one last question for you, just kind of like off topic and everything. Sure, yeah, we, think, yeah, man, I have time. <laughs> who, who do you think is going to win the Libertadores and the Sudamericana? Flamengo. Flamengo? You're Flamenguista? Oh, of course, Flamengo. Oh. But it's not because I'm Flamenguista, because I think mm -hmm. Flamengo, I mean, could be Flamengo or Palmeiras. Both teams, mm -hmm. they, they. Yeah. I would pick three teams Flamengo, Palmeiras, and Atletico, and Atletico mm -hmm. lost to Palmeiras. So those yeah. three top teams in Brazil right now, top yeah. three teams in Brazil by far. Oh, yeah. So, but I think Flamengo has. I mean, it's a tough. Could be either way, but I still think that Flamengo can win mm -hmm. the Libertadores. Yeah. Nice. And what about the Sudamericana? I mean, you have Bragantino, and then you also have uh, Atlético Paranaense. They do well. Too. Yeah, they doing well as well. Mm -hmm. And Bragantino, honestly, you talked about experience and tradition. Atlético Paranaense because they have yeah. been on the, you know, on the Serie A in Brazil mm -hmm. for many, many years. Yeah. Bragantino, he just, you know, first year played the top division, and I think, but they doing really well. They had a yeah. good league last year. Yes. Uh, I don't know. That's going to be a good one to watch. It's going to be a That's good one sure. as well. But I think if I have to bat, I would pick Atlético Paranaense. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get those two right. You see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, I'll, I'll owe you a Guarana if you get them both. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bet on a Guarana for that one. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I say, I say Flamengo is going to win just because uh, I go for Corinthians. So Corinthians. So okay. I don't want Palmeiras to win. Flamengo, I'll take Flamengo, and then I'll go with Bragantino. Bragantino, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Bragantino yeah. is doing well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are on the top. I don't know. I didn't check the, the standings. Uh, I think they're in fifth place right now. Fifth place. I would say yeah. fifth. I think the they're in fifth right now. Fifth. So yeah. now I didn't watch those games this weekend. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was just with yeah. my family the entire weekend. I have Saturday, Sunday off. Uh, but um, but yeah, I would say around that fifth, and then I mean they feeling good now. Yeah, you know? they yeah they're been pretty good. Um, because a couple of weeks ago they were like in third position, second position, so they're they're up there. They're not. They yeah, they had they, a, like a few drives that brought them down yeah, a little they're bit. They doing but... better. They doing better than the Atletico. I would say now. Mm -hmm. You know, I could yeah. be Valentino. They doing better, yeah. but because Atletico, they have much more experience in this. Tournaments like international, yeah, tournaments, and they have been there very close to win. Uh, and they have a big tradition, big club. I think I don't know, could be either way, but I think Atletico, because of all, all those mm -hmm. clubs combined, I think Atletico has a little bit of a uh, better chance, in my opinion. Yeah, no, and then also, if you take a look at the semifinals, I think Atletico Paranaense had the toughest. Um, match, I mean, against Peñarol compared to Bragantino, that they had Libertad. Libertad, credit due is where they, you know, credit due, they managed to get there, but Libertad, they're a big club in South America, but not like a title contender. No, Peñarol cannot yeah. compete. Peñarol is, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. big, like very big club in, in South yeah. America. Oh, yeah. So that's that's other point. I yeah. forgot about that. That's the other yeah. point. That make, I think, as Atletico a little bit more stronger on, yeah. on this, this final, but you think yeah, we'll see. you see is that is a sport anything can happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. The once the all the stats are there, a little the detail, referee... you know, bad call for the referee or red yeah. car or PK, yeah. you know, yeah. a silly mistake by a by one player. Yeah. Oh, you know, change the game completely. Anything can happen. Is a sport, yeah. <laughs> you know, team sport. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've been following. So, for example, um, I left Mato Grosso in 2017. So I've been following Cuyabá since then. And it was funny because every year they've been ascending to this first division. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. That's so oh, great. Yeah. Cuyabá, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Cuyabá, they're like right there in the Sudamericana spots. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I like I just hope for them to like get into the Sudamericana uh, spots. And then hopefully next year they, they got some. South American championships. Did you pretty play interesting. Soccer? I played soccer. Yeah, gr growing up, I did. I did play soccer a lot. 
Um, I just played a lot of recreational one. Never went into select or anything like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I played a lot of a lot of it for fun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and wait, then I, uh, I can tell yeah. you, I love it. Yeah, I've been watching it since I was like especially four, a guy five years old. from Brazil, especially a guy not from Brazil, know mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that what's going on in Brazil with the league and, and all mm -hmm. those teams and yeah, I mean it's yeah. If you ask anything here for me, like <laughs> I won't know a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I've been here for 12 years. Yeah. No, I've I've been I've loved Brazilian soccer. I have a lot of jerseys actually um from brazil um, i i do collect a lot of jerseys and um okay. i have a, a cruzeiro a cruzeiro jersey atletico mineiro i know they're big rivals but i love the jerseys so i kept the jerseys of course yeah well, so i have some when I, one when I, maybe when i come back from brazil maybe i try go once a year in brazil oh cool maybe i can bring you one from from my hometown i don't know if you All have right. your Hawaii. Uh, yeah, I've heard about Hawaii, of course. Hawaii uh, Figueres, those two, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, teams from the from Florianopolis, big yeah. rival, big rival. Yeah. Yeah. In both teams, they already play on the top division in Brazil. Uh huh. I think last year Hawaii was in it. Yeah, um, yeah. They, 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 I think they, they dropped to the, the mm -hmm. second. No, no, last year, two years ago, they yes, dropped. There last you go. Year. They dropped last year, and Figueres was on the first division as well. They dropped to the yeah. second division, and now they play <clears> the third division. Yeah. Yeah. And then I played, I played for Hawaii. I grew up, okay. uh, like, I was big Hawaii fan. Uh -huh. I was uh -huh. going to the games when I grew up. And then I actually I played three years mm -hmm. with Hawaii. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I know, obviously, because it's Santa Catarina and everything, but I wanted to get my hands on the Tropical Insta jersey. And I, oh. I, when I tried to look for one, it was really tough for some reason because I think they weren't shipping internationally and stuff like that. Oh, really? So I was like, oh, man, a Chapecoense one would have been good. But, yeah. Chapecoense, they, I mean, they were yeah. a small team. Mm -hmm. And then for the last maybe 10 years, they yeah, started. Struggling a bit. They start, oh, they, no, they were strong, big time. Yeah. They were a really small team in Santa Catarina. Mm -hmm. And then for the last maybe 10 years, they start getting better on the Santa Catarina State League. Yeah. Right? You know, like every state mm -hmm. has. Yeah. And they start getting better. We start well. They start, mm -hmm. you know, play against Chris Yuma. That was a big mm -hmm. club. Joinville, four big clubs yeah. in, in Santa Catarina. Havaí, Figueirense, Chris Yuma, and Joinville. Always. Yep. And then Chapecoense start getting like right there. Yeah. You know, in the last 10 years, I would say. And then there were... They didn't have any league because in Brazil that's four division, right? A, B, yeah. C, D. And yeah. there's a lot of teams they have no 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 division. Yeah. They fight to get it in in the division yeah. D. Yeah. Fourth division. And the Chapecoense did they get there? And then okay, C, B, A. Unbelievable. And, I, yeah. In the last, I would say, in, in six years from the they went to the D. Mm -hmm. to the a or maybe yeah, the and even and even to the final of the of the sud americana but then that airplane yeah, crash yeah, is what yeah, affected yeah. them a yeah. lot i was actually in brazil when that happened oh um, really yeah everybody in the news was watching it it was just oh. every everywhere yeah, obviously it was a it's, tragic yeah uh, soccer in brazil is a religion mm -hmm. i mean yeah you know, soccer every day we grow up <laughs> with soccer in our our blood like, yeah every day all day yeah and so, i was there it was, it was a tragic thing yeah i remember like all the players or all the teams were wanting to like you know lend off some players for them to kind of build up and and everything like that and oh yeah it was oh. it was pretty interesting how to see all of that unfold in real time and so was, sure. um, but uh but yeah so well pablo again thank you so much i love to chat with you um, if I do have any more questions in the future, I'll shoot you an email. Sounds good. Yeah, just keep Sounds in good. touch. You know, if absolutely. Like to, let me know. Would you like to, Abs you know, to show up in any practice and and talk? You know, how's everything going? And yeah, or here Zoom or phone call. You know, absolutely. We are here. Absolutely. All right, Pablo. Thank you so much. Everybody go. Thank you too. Have a good one. Yeah, you do the same. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.